Hi, my name is Brandy Tannenbaum, and this presentation is part of series number four and is looking at what we are doing to educate kids about concussion, prevention, identification, and management. The focus question for this presentation is looking ahead in the next three to five years. What do we need to do to help children with concussion do the things they need, want, and love to do? My title is Preventing Concussion from an Organizational Perspective. I'm a risk manager by trade with a passion for creating healthy outcomes in sport and recreation programs. I've been a program coordinator at Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center in the RBC First Office for Injury Prevention since 2009. I'm a co-lead for the Play Safe Initiative, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. My formal education is in kinesiology and health science. I have a designation in Canadian risk management, and I'm currently finishing a master's degree in public health. Full disclosure, before signing Brooke, I was privileged to work in a number of sport and recreation organizations at the community and provincial level for more than 15 years, so I often wear two hats in conversations about injury. Our connection with Holland Blue Review and the Concussion Research Center is through the PlaySafe initiative. This program allows our office to make connections to the community at large and explore some of the root causes of injury. While the PlaySafe initiative is focused on reducing immediate injury in sport and recreation activities, it's also simultaneously aware of the associated long-term positive health outcomes. The PlaySafe initiative has three objectives. Connect. We want to provide a place for the sport, health, education, and recreation sectors to come together around injury issues. Capacity. We need to build skills and competencies for organizations to drive prevention from the inside out. And change. We must shift the way sport and recreation injury is perceived from accidental to preventable. We are challenging the status quo on injury in sport and recreation because what we're doing right now, well, it's just not good enough. Here's an example. This is our typical starting line for discussions about concussion. We generally talk about concussion prevention after the concussion has occurred. We tend to focus the conversation specifically on the brain of the injured person. But what if we changed our perspective? What if this was the starting line instead? Here we could talk about how participants interact with each other or about their skills, skill acquisition, and the concept of physical literacy. Or if this was the starting line, we could talk about the playing surfaces, equipment, rules, policies, leader selection, training, and organizational capacity. Or this. We could discuss how and where facilities are built and the role they play in safety. Or the infrastructure around our community, like emergency medical services, location of trauma centers, and concussion resources in the community. We can talk about the deeply rooted cultural beliefs about injuries in sport and recreation, like the old adage, they're just part of the game. When we change our viewpoint and look at concussion prevention from a broader perspective, we can envision it better as an upstream activity that leverages the whole of the community and removes some of the burden from the individual in the moment of contact and the aftermath that ensues. We continue to bring injury prevention to the forefront. We simply cannot have a conversation about concussion prevention without acknowledging the massive hole that exists without the necessary data that comes from injury surveillance. Until recently, there was no consistent tool for measuring injury in sport other than hospital data. I'm happy to report to you today that through the PlaySafe initiative and the vision and expertise of Dr. Bill Montalpar, the PlaySafe injury tracker eliminates this barrier. I'll tell you a little bit more about this shortly. The schema here provides a standard injury prevention model that we can apply to concussion. It begins with step one, establishing the extent of the concussion problem. This means learning how many, to whom, and where concussions occur. Step two is establishing the causal factors and mechanisms of concussion, so learning how and why the injuries are occurring. Step three is introducing a prevention strategy, like a policy or a program change. Step four is measuring the effectiveness of the strategy by repeating step one. But so often we skip steps one and two, going directly to three, which ultimately means that we can't do step four. As a result, we provide a disservice to the participants who rely on us to keep them safe from harm. It's imperative that we begin to see concussion as a predictable and preventable injury. To do so, we need data from sport and recreation organizations. Here are some things that are working well in our efforts to reduce concussion in sport and recreation. The PlaySafe Network is a multi-sectoral collaborative that's working together to reduce injury in sport and recreation. Here, we're developing common safety language that emphasizes prevention. Injury surveillance in the PlaySafe Injury Tracker. We're really excited about this piece. We've developed a web-enabled injury surveillance tool for sport and recreation programs to understand both the incidence and the etiology of their injuries. 
Yes, it's absolutely free for organizations to use. It's a standardized approach, and it's available on all devices and all platforms. In 2014, Ontario sport and recreation organizations were mandated by the Ministry to implement concussion policies. We received permission from the CDC to adapt their guide for Canadian audience and developed ours, the Play Safe Concussion Policy Development Guide for Recreation and Sport Leaders, in collaboration with many of our Play Safe Network organizations. Also in 2014, we published a blog article with the British Journal of Sports Medicine calling for a consistent definition of safety in sport, and we're beginning to make some noise. It's not enough just to talk about safety. We need some clear and consistent guidelines for what it means, how we operationalize it, and ultimately how we measure it. This has naturally led to a call for building a national safety framework, something that can drive consistent injury prevention efforts. Here's what's not working. First, the micropolicy approach. When organizations create separate, inconsistent policies to address things like concussion, it creates an artificial sense of safety. This approach increases resource requirements that few organizations can spare. The strategies we use to prevent things like ACL injuries are the same for concussion. So why create separate policies? What we need is a comprehensive approach. Lack of efficacy. It's impossible to know if current concussion policies are effective in reducing concussion incidence and severity because we weren't measuring it before and we're not measuring it now. Sure, we have hospital data, but that's just the tip of the iceberg and it doesn't provide the necessary information to inform prevention strategies. We need better data from the organizations themselves. Capacity. We heard Kristen Ray speak to this in the last series, but it warrants repeating. Sport organizations rely heavily on volunteers to deliver programs and activities. The lack of injury prevention competencies to drive injury prevention strategies is important to note when developing approaches from outside the sector. Excessive focus on concussion management. It's a downstream approach that is more expensive and less effective. It perpetuates the notion that injuries are an expected outcome of participation, and it removes the responsibility of organizations to address program risks in the first place. I'm really looking forward to spending two energy-filled days at Holland Bloor View, where we share, debate, and challenge each other to be better than we are today. I will bring a perspective of prevention to the discussions and look forward to building something new and innovative with you. As a reminder, the PlaySafe network is growing and we're always looking for new opportunities to collaborate. Many thanks to Dr. Nick Reed and his team at Holland Blue Review for the opportunity to present today. I'm looking forward to meeting everyone at the first international symposium on pediatric concussion. So until then, have fun and play safe. <laughs>